Hello fantastic people, I hope you are doing great. In this short tutorial we'll be creating movement for top-down shooter. If you are looking for keyboard-based RPG movement, check this tutorial instead. Let's do it! First, we need to select the character, then add Circle Collider 2D to it. Of course we need to resize it to fit the character size. Then we need to add the rigid body to the component to it and change the gravity scale to zero. It's time to create new script. Let's call it player. Don't forget to drag and drop it on the character. The script will consist of two parts. Looking at the mouse and moving. Before we write them let's clean up a little bit. Awesome. We'll start with creating look at mouse method. In first line we create vector2 variable to store the mouse position. Input class has a mouse position property which, as you'd expect, returns mouse position. Unfortunately, there's a little trap. This property stores the position on the screen, not in the game world. That means not the position of the game objects like our character, but rather things like our user interface. Luckily for us, the camera has a method screen to world point, which converts the screen position to the world position. Usually I create my variables using var keyword. This time it would mean we will receive vector3 from the method, which would make the process a little bit more complicated. Using vector2 will allow us to discard the information about z position without any additional action. Now it's time to rotate our character. There are many ways to do that and most of them involve trigonometry. Making research for this episode I realized there is a much simpler method. Transform has four properties, up, down, left and right. In my case, I will have to use the up property. That's because my character is looking up when its rotation is 0, 0, 0. Whatever direction I pass will make the upper part of my sprite to face that particular direction. Now to get the direction we subtract from the mouse position the position of the character. Because we are creating 2D game we get rid of the z-axis by creating 2D vector containing only x and y position. If you are feeling a little bit lost, don't worry, I will be covering the operations on vectors in my next video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss it. Now it's time to use our newly created code in the update method. Let's test it out. Fantastic! Now let's create the move method. It will be much simpler than the previous one. First we create a variable and call it input. We'll store in it new vector2 which will contain information about horizontal and vertical input. In the second line we simply set the velocity of the rigid body to be normalized input times speed. Let's create the missing variables. First we create a variable to store the reference to our rigid body and of course we set it in the start method. Then we create the serialized private float variable to store the desired velocity of the character. Now the only thing left in the code is to use our move method in the update. Now we just need to set the speed in the inspector and we are ready to test it out. We'll have a little problem. Look what will happen if the character collides with anything. That's because we didn't freeze the rotation in the z-axis. I know it sounds a little bit weird, because the rotation in z-axis is actually the only thing we need. But we want to make sure we have a full control over the rotation from the script. We don't want the physics engine to interfere with it. And now we are truly done. Have a lovely day, love you and bye bye.